So a couple of days ago, the dev edition of Elemental was released, and in there we've now got the early beta version of the Flexbox container experiment. This opens up more options for more creative layouts while reducing the amount of dibs that are being used, something that I know a lot of people are absolutely hot on when it comes to working with page builders like Elemental and Elemental Pro. Now, I'm gonna give you just a brief overview of some of the new features that have been added, how to access this, some of the things you can do with it, but I'm not gonna go into huge amounts of detail. If you want to see a video that has tons of information on how Flexbox works and how to get started, also taking a look at the savings you make from the divception problems that we've had of loads and loads of nested divs, I'd recommend checking out Maxime's video right here. It's a really good in-depth video that covers a lot more than I'm going to cover, and I didn't want to reinvent the wheel when he's done such a fantastic job. So check that out. There will be a link there and a link in the description below. Okay, so the first thing we want to see is how do we actually go about accessing this new Flexbox container option? Well, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you've got the developer's edition of Elemental installed. If you don't, simply head over to your plugin section, download, install that and get everything set up. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded it, but I'll show you how you can go about actually enabling this experimental feature. So from your WordPress dashboard, simply head over into the Elemental Dev section, into Settings, and inside Settings, you'll see we've got a tab for Experiments. If we enable that, scroll right the way down through the first part until you get to the section that says Container. All you need to do is activate this if it's not already activated. And this will then allow you to use the container element over what you'd normally be used to using the sections, the inner sections and those kinds of things. So those features will no longer be available inside the editor. Any designs using that will still be available to you. Now, the most important thing you do here is do not, under any circumstances, install and test this out on a live or a production website. This is something that's early in beta you just wanna make sure you're testing this out on a safe server, so if things go wrong, it has no impact. The other thing to make sure that you have, if you wanna test this out fully, is to make sure that you've got the new DOM models enabled and all those kinds of things. So improved asset loading, for example, make sure that they're enabled, and this is gonna give you the best results. Okay, so with that being said, how do we go about actually starting to work with this and what features do we actually have? Well, let's go ahead and create a new page. Now, once we create a new page, we're gonna give this a new name. We're gonna call this Flex Model, and we'll just simply hit Publish, and then we'll go ahead and edit this with Elemental. So once Elemental loads in, you'll see now if we take a look at the basic section on the left-hand side, we have Container. And this replaces, like I say, the section and the inner sections that we've previously been used to working with. Now, what this does is, this gives us the ability to use the Flex Container. This gives us a more flexible, as its name would suggest, way of working. However, one of the things that comes with this is, if you were used to working with the older method or the existing method with Elemental and Elemental Pro, you're gonna find this is something quite confusing to start off with. That's not inherent to do with Elemental in any way. This is just the way that the Flex model actually works. It's a different concept to what you're probably used to. So let's go and add in a Flex container, first of all. And this drops in the Flex container. So you can see now that if we take a look at the left-hand side, we've got all the options for the container. We've got things like the width, the minimum height, the direction, align items, those kinds of things. So this already looks very different to what you're probably used to when you're working with creating your layouts inside Elemental. Now the first thing is there is a little bit of a quirk here. You can see that the width is set to be percentage. However, it's showing us 1400 pixels. So you could, if you wanted to, just change this to 100. Obviously, if you wanted to work with viewport width and pixel values, you could do that inside here. And you could, if you wanted to mix and match these values. The minimum height, in the same way that the container used to work, this allows us to create a pixel or viewpoint height based height for this particular container. So for example, if we set this to be something like 800 pixels, we now get an 800 pixel wide by 100% wide container. And the container, as its name would suggest, contains various different things. We can drop in additional containers to nest those. We can drop in the different widgets that we have inside Elemental, things like headings, images, those kinds of things. So we've also then got the direction. 
Now, again, this is one of those things that at this point in time isn't set up the way you should be using it. So hopefully they will correct this. You can see it defaults to column instead of either default or row. So row is what you would probably want to work with on a general basis for most use cases or many use cases. So if we set that back to row, you see nothing really happens other than these align items and justify items change. So if I change that back to column, you can see they change to being vertical. However, if we change this to row, they'll change to horizontal, which makes a lot of sense. And in a moment, we'll take a look at how these actually work. And then we can control things like spacing, the wrap, the overflow, the HTML tag that's going to be used for this particular container. And you can see this is set to default, but you can, if you want to, set this up to be whatever you're using. So if you're working with headers and you create a flex header or container using the flex model, then you can set this to be header. It's not something that Google will penalize you for, but it is good practice to name these relevant to what you're actually creating inside Elementor. So we could set this to be section, for example, and now nothing really happens other than inside our HTML code that would be marked up as being a section. So again, like I say, just useful. Okay, so this is a basic container, but what can we do with a container? Well, we can put things inside it. So let's just drop in a couple of images. We'll drop this image in and we'll set, we'll just pick an image from our media library and we'll just choose three images that are basically the same. Okay, so we've now got three items inside our container element. So if we look at these, you can see that we've got different size images placed inside there. You can also see that they're taking up the full height of this particular container. Even though the image isn't stretching, you can see the actual container element, the widget container, as it were, takes up the full space. That's perfectly fine. And we can use that to our advantage and we'll take a look at that in a moment. So let's go and select our container one more time. Let's just for ease open up the navigator so we can see exactly what we have on our page. Okay, so our container contains three different image widgets. Now, if we select one of these image widgets and we go to advanced, inside advanced, you can see we now have a new tool called layout. And inside there, we can control various different aspects of this particular widget. So the margins, the padding, the width, but also we have the align self and the order and so on. So these come into play working in conjunction with the Flexbox container that we're using. So we'll again come back to those in a moment. Let's select our overall container, making sure we're in layout, and now we can take a look at these align items. Now let's switch it between a row and a column and see the effect this has. So at the moment a row means that these stack horizontally. Whereas if we switch over to be column, they'll now stack vertically. So you can see this is the main difference between your rows and your columns is how these various different widgets or containers, if you use those inside, will actually interact with the container element itself. So we can now go ahead and use these align items when it's set to a row. So at the moment it's set to flex start, which basically means it sits at the top of the container. If we do center, as his name would suggest, it centers it if we do flex end, it'll sit at the bottom of our container. And if we do a stretch, basically does nothing because of the way that the container is set up. So this kind of plays in with the width section, the direction that you set things up, and then the align item. So the justify content, this is how now it will interact on a row based level. So at the moment, flex start sits to the left hand side, which is the default value, which we don't really need to select anything. Center, as its name would suggest, will center it inside the container. Flex end to the right hand side or the end of it. Space between will equally space these out across the container's width. You can space around and that will kind of give you even spacing around it. Obviously you're doubling up with these two. And then finally you've got space evenly and as its name would suggest it puts even spacing to the left and the right hand side of each of these different widgets. So let's just disable that and disable that to put things back to their default settings. Now let's set this to be a column. And you can see, you know, they've stacked now on top of each other. You'll notice the align items now flip because we're dealing with the column based container as opposed to being set as a row. Hope this makes sense. So now we can align our items to the left, to the center, to the right, or stretch in this example is not really going to do anything. Justify content. We can see this is set to flex start. So it's at the top of our container center. We'll set it in the center of the height of our container. Flex end at the bottom, space between, space around, space evenly. 
you can see they're working either going across when it's set to a row or going top to bottom when it's working with a column. And you can combine these together. So you could say you want these to be spaced evenly but aligned to the start of the flex box, so over to the left hand side. So by using these kinds of settings, you can get quite creative, but this is based upon the container. You can also base these upon each of the individual widgets. So let's just set these back to their default values just by unchecking them. So that's centered at the top. Now let's set this back to be a row. And what we can do now is we can go over and we can select this particular widget. In this case, it's the image element. Underneath the advanced section, now we have a line self. And a line self is just the widget, not the container. So we can combine these together. So you can see now we could say we want to align this to the center. We want to align it to the flex end, or we can stretch it. And you can see the container itself stretches, not the image, just the container itself. And we can adjust the order of these if we want to. There's lots of different options. I don't want to get into too heavy into this because I think this is a topic in its own right when we take a look at designing things. And if you'd like to see a video like that, let me know in the comment section below if you'd like me to show you how to get started building designs using the container and the Flexbox model. Okay, so what we could do is we can now select this one and we could come into its own advanced settings and we could say we want to put this to be the center. And you can see now we're starting to create layouts that would have been more complicated in the past because we would have had to use spacing and padding and margins and all those kinds of things to get something which is now relatively simple. And again, if we select the container and we hop over into the layout section, we could now set these to be centered. So we've now created this V kind of design using these tools in conjunction with each other. Now there's lots of other things inside here, like if we want to control the spacing between these items, we can adjust that and you can see that now adjust the spacing inside the container element. You can again come into advanced and inside advanced now you can see we've also got layout options. So there's tons and tons of options inside you. Now this is as far as I want to go with the technical tutorial. The final bit that I want to kind of cover is just my thoughts on the flex model, the container element, and what I think this means for Elemental moving forward and part of its demographic. Now at this point in time, for people like myself and people that do this for a living, that want to have maximum flexibility with a fast loading site, the complexity of understanding the flex model, which at first is quite complex, can be a little bit overwhelming for newer users. So I think you're gonna have a divide. I think you're gonna have people that are used to working with the Flex model and they've been waiting for Elementor to embrace this technology. They're gonna love this because it opens up so many doors, reduces the overall size, not by huge amounts. As you'll see if you take a look at Maxim's video, it does make a difference, but the amount of underlying code that's being removed probably isn't gonna make a humongous impact upon the page load time. You're still gonna to have to use other methods to ensure that your site loads as quick as possible. But I think new users coming on board or people that are not comfortable with the whole flex model concept, I think the original method of using containers and things like, oh, not containers, you know, rows and columns and those kinds of things, what we were used to with it as it currently is, I think that's gonna be an easier concept for people to understand and embrace. So I think we are definitely gonna see a divide in the support, unless of course, Elementor, when they release this new flex model, slowly phase out what you can do with the older method if you, do, you, know, you opt in then, should we say. So my thoughts are, I think there's gonna be a definite divide to start off with. I think the flex model is a little bit more complex to understand for newer users or people that don't come from a web design background. The nice thing is that if you were already have sites created using the existing model, which you know pretty much everybody's going to have until this becomes the norm, those models are still going to work. It'll still support it inside Elementor, so your site shouldn't fall apart. And then if you want to change things over to work with the Flex model, you could do that. However, would it be worthwhile doing it on existing websites? If it's already out there, and you're making money off it, or it's a client's website, then you would have to question whether the time investment would be worth it. However, developing new sites, obviously this would be the better way to go about it moving forward. So for me, to sum it up in a succinct fashion as I probably can, this is definitely a step in the right direction. And if you're coming over from something like Bricks Builder or Oxygen, you're gonna be used to working with this because this is very, very similar in how it's been set up and how it works. So the transition between those tools should be pretty much seamless for you. I still think there's gonna be a usability issue for newer users that don't understand this. And I think the complexity what this brings could be a little bit daunting and push people away from using tools like this. 
but good job Elementor for actually implementing this. And even though there's still some bugs and some quirks in it, the current level of integration and how this all works is pretty nicely done. So kudos for doing that. It's taken a while, so you're gonna have to be picked up on that, I'm afraid, but good for doing this. It is making strides forward with the DOM model updates with this method of creating your layouts. It's the right direction to be going in. So that's my thoughts, but what are your thoughts? Let me have those in the comment section below. Would this be something you'll adopt? Have you been waiting for this for a long time? Let me know, give me your feedback, and don't forget to check out Maximus' video that's linked below and in the description below. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.